Art, whatever form it takes, is about the mystery of life. I hope that people feel sort of compelled to investigate the piece. It's very odd, it's alien, it's strange. There is an image that you get 10, 15 feet away, but as you get closer, you start to realize there's a whole other painting going on, there's a whole other drawing going on. It has to do with a pandemic and an epidemic. The pandemic being COVID-19, of course, and the epidemic of black people being mishandled, murdered, etc., by the police. After six months of challenging time, reopening the gallery was very important to me, obviously, and to many artists that I've been working with for so many years. My 15th season in St. Louis, showing solo shows by Michael Barron, Patricia Olenek, Chris Keller, and William Morris. I'm interested in using ephemera and visual material that is probably going to go away. Well, the exhibition spans um, the work of the last two and a half years. I do a lot of work on the road when I'm traveling. In the early 80s, I developed this strategy of installation that I called static theater. They involved a two-dimensional element on a wall and then sculpture in front of it that is part of the content and part of the material and part of the narrative. There's a lot of material in my work that's political or social, and then there's areas of it where it's very personal. Oculus is a light sculpture that is inspired by the strange sort of science fiction that began to emerge from the era of the 60s. When I was at the University of Michigan teaching, I was working in a transgenics lab, and one of the life forms that I was working with quite a bit were these Drosophila flies, which is one of the key species that scientists work with to play with genetic code and with DNA. Looking at the faceted fly eye of the transgenic Drosophila, which is just a fruit fly, I began to see some deformations or reformations of the eye and decided to build a light sculpture that focused on this notion of both being viewed and viewing simultaneously. I hope that the work invites a kind of closer observation of the world around us. Shift was a show that I've been working on for about two years. I'm always working in a very intense manner in the two to three months before a show. This show was scheduled to be in April, and when we got interrupted, the work did take a shift. I figured out a way for me to create something extremely beautiful, then destroy it, and then build it back up. It's very much in relation to some of the feelings that maybe a lot of people are having during this time. It does mark a difference for me. Drawing became so much more important in the development of each of these works. I started the show and everything was about really high saturation, strong color, very aggressive. And then as I developed over time, I started to get a little more subdued and a little more quiet. The really spectacular things that can occur, those little happy accidents, those things occur over time and they develop in a more subtle way and I think that really comes across in the work. The piece has a lot to do with ratings and coverage and which of those two is more important. It's about media and media's coverage of the pandemic and George Floyd's murder by the police. CNN, NBC, the footage of the actual events from YouTube are in there. And the primary piece that holds the whole thing together is this track from Brass Against called Wake Up. There's a little snippet of Peter Finch in Network where he says, I am announcing my retirement due to poor ratings. Dissect the information you receive from television carefully because a big component of electronic journalism is entertainment and another component is ratings and then there's the news. 